Jersey. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the PicSwap Media YouTube channel. My name is Sean Bernard, and I'm here a little bit frustrated today, a little bit angry with the uh, the goings-on of the NBA. And it is no secret we live in an imperfect world, and perhaps that is not articulated or put on display more than the NBA All-Star voting. And we see that last night we got the, the release rosters for the full-time. We, we've kind of seen things uh, filter out and little things come in and out. There was the original voting, the three rounds of voting. The starters were announced in which Joel Embiid was left off, which, of course, upset all Sixers fans, and rightfully so. Uh, my my point of view uh, still sticks by, like, the positionless things is, is nonsense in today's NBA. There's just not positions on the court. Embiid is essentially a big wing, uh, a seven-foot-two wing. Nikola Jokic is essentially a, a seven-foot point guard. There's The styles of play do not match size, and it's silly to put them in categories like that. But with that being said, I think there's an individual argument for Joel Embiid against each particular player. So I'm not going to cop out and say that he hasn't had a better year than Jason Tatum or Giannis Antetokounmpo or Kevin Durant because he absolutely has, and he deserves a spot on that. Now, that does come down to fan voting, so I'm not going to put that completely on the NBA. Uh, Embiid actually came in third for both the media and the player voting, came in fourth for the fan voting, which dropped him off there. So maybe that is on the fans for not voting enough. Uh, he's a an odd cat that way. But the guy that I think fired me up a little bit more with James Harden being left off ballots completely. James Harden, who has had his kind of revival year, who is coming back, who has answered all calls about what he has left on the tank, just looking at his averages on the air, 21.4 points, 11 assists, which leads the NBA, 6.4 rebounds, 1.2 steals, shooting 39.4% from three, which is a career high for the 33-year-old, proving that he has that gas in the tank, and he's been that second option for the Sixers. He's producing at an all-star level. All the numbers point to him. But the NBA voting just doesn't seem to agree. To agree, and to kick that off, let's look exactly at what we're working with and what the the rosters are for this All Star game. And I'll bring this up right here. Here we go. Obviously, we have Giannis as the captain of the East. LeBron James is the captain of the West for the Eastern Conference. As we mentioned, we got Kevin Durant, we got Kyrie Irving, Donovan Mitchell, and Jason Tatum as the starters. Uh, for the Western Conference, we got Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Zion Williams, who, by the way, has played nine fewer games than Joel Embiid this year. Looking at the bench for the Eastern Conference, we have Bam Adebayo, Jalen Brown, DeMar DeRozan, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, and Julius Randle. Looking at the Western Conference, we have Paul George, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Jaron Jackson Jr., Damian Lillard, Laurie Markkinen, John Morant, Damanis Sabon and Damanis Sabonis. There's a lot of great names on here. It is no secret how talented the NBA is. Uh, plenty of these guys are deserving, and there's plenty of guys who have left off that have been deserving. Look around at the Western Conference. De'Aaron Fox is a guy who leaped to my mind that I believe deserves on there, who I think has had a terrific year and deserves every bit of his credit for being an all-star. And that is kind of the issue with this. Is it's so hard of, of when to make that cut. Uh, I've seen the, the J.J. Redick podcast kind of debating uh should the rosters be expanded should there be more more players in the all-star game i personally like that there is a high bar for making it to an all-star game uh i think jj makes a great argument there's plenty of logic behind it behind the expansion behind the all-star rosters not expanding in the same way the league has and but i i like i said i like the high bar and the bottom line is i believe james harden cleared it and uh, i'm not going to cop out and say that like None of these guys weren't deserving, and instead I'm going to go and take a look at a few guys that I believe he should have cleared. And we'll start off with right here. Uh, the two that leaped to mind were Drew Holiday and DeMar DeRozan, both guys who I've seen quietly, pretty quiet on their uh, their basic campaign. So we'll start off here with Drew Holiday. And if we look at the stats here, James Harding is averaging more points per game, more assists per game, more rebounds per game, better free throw percentage, better effective field goal percentage, better three-point percentage. And just has across the board been better than Drew Holiday. More efficient, better stats. And if you want to leap to the advanced numbers, which, of course, plenty of people get fired up about, and I will include uh, Damar on this list, it also still points to uh, James Harden. And shout out to Brian Toparic of Liberty Ballers, who put, makes some awesome work and, and tweeted this out here. Uh, it might be a little small for you guys, so I'll read it out. Looking at kind of the advanced ratings here, player efficiency rating, 22.2 for James Harden. Uh, eclipses both DeRozan, who has a 21.8, and Drew Hottie, who's an 18.9. Uh, James Harden with the best true shooting of the bunch, the best three-point attempt rate, best free throw attempt rate, 
best win shares for 48 by a significant margin. Just a, his VORP just almost doubles. These guys, it's it. Everything points to James Harden when we get it, and it, when you uh, get into it, and a guy who is is the second unit on the Sixers team because of Joel Embiid. But this isn't a slight at the ability that he has. He has shown capabilities on the, the stretches where Joel Embiid's been out. He's flashed the ability to still be a primary creator. He's made adjustments to his game, and he's become a better player for it. And another thing that I, I wanted to bring up here, which dropped this morning, is the MVP ratings from NBA.com. And if this doesn't just show you something, like I don't know what to tell you. Let's look down the list. We got Nikola Jokic, number one, Joel Embiid, number two, who is not starting on the all-star team. So he can come in second on the MVP ladder uh, with nobody in the Eastern Conference ahead of him and still does not get the starting nod. And then number seven, we have James Harden here. So there's some recognition for the numbers, but it is not showing up or or did not show up in the all-star voting. James Harden is the only one out of these 10 players on this list to be within the MVP ladder and not be making the all-star game. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a hate Philly. I love that there's a uh, the kind of a fire in the gut for both these guys. There's going to be a prove it tour for both Joel Embiid and James Harden. I mean, these are both players who, when asked about it, uh, Joel Embiid's sitting in the locker room saying he's not even sure if he's going to make the All Star game, and it, it's silly that he has to have that fear, but it's real because we're seeing it. It's live. It's put on display in front of us. So uh, it's a real bummer for both these guys to be putting forth it. I know it's kind of like a, a whatever game. I'm sure James Harden's going to have uh, quite the time just having a week off and doing his thing rather than playing some more basketball in Salt Lake City. Uh, it's fine for him to get some extra rest on his body. The playoffs is going to be the, the make or breaker when it matters. But when we talk about why it does, it's it's the legacy stuff. This is uh, James Harden has been an all-star, a perennial all-star every year in his career. This snaps a 11-year streak of him making the all-star game, which is frustrating to him. And when you look at these final resumes of guys, James Harden, a guy who's recognized one of the top 75 basketball players to ever play in the NBA, to not be on the All-Star in a year where he's still producing at a high level, high level is just crazy. And Joel Embiid, I know he, he at the end of the day, like we're not going to remember who starts, who doesn't. But when you look down that pack, he sticks out like a sore thumb as far as a guy who is far more elite than the talent that surrounds him. And uh, it is a shame for him. And I do hope this fires it up. I love the James Harden Instagram story, just the disrespect, him seeing it. Uh, it it's awesome. Th- th- these guys are about to go on a, a tear down the world tour, and Philadelphia fans should be grateful for the disrespect. So it is Philly versus the world. It's James Harden, Joel Embiid versus everybody, and that's how it's got to be moving forward. So the only way to kind of get that recognition uh, as they, they seek or as they want or how, how they deserve is by winning. And and I'll wrap this up with a quote from Joel Embiid that illustrates this so clearly. And uh, once again, I love where the mindset's at. And it's the only way that they're going to truly eclipse this. But if we look at this here, when asked following the game, when it was first announced that he was not an all-star starter, Joel Embiid says, quote, I think it's more of the motivation to go out there and try and win the whole thing. I guess that's the only way I'm probably going to get that respect. I think we've got a pretty good chance. Uh, I was able to sit in that press conference, uh, see Embiid's kind of expression, his outlook on it. And I do like how there is that fire within him. He talked about like how it's pretty well documented that he's not well liked at this point, uh, that he doesn't care. Maybe it's because he trolls too much or maybe it's because he's an asshole. And the bottom line is he's not changing and he hopes people can catch up to it. And if they don't, he doesn't care. So I love that. I love that me against the world mentality, the us against the world mentality. And it's very cool. We're going to see James Harden and Joel Mead kind of fight their playoff demons off together. There's plenty of storylines heading this postseason. The Sixers have done everything possible to kind of pave that path for them. Sitting at third place in the East now, just a game beyond the Bucs. Uh, it's going to be tight down to the finish, and there's plenty of talent in this Eastern Conference. But when they're playing at their peak, there's nobody that can stop this Sixers team. We're seeing the flashes of the James Harden and Joel Mead pick and roll. We're seeing the ability of both these guys to just score at will in isolation when the team needs. Uh, having that ability back for Harden is huge. Him shooting catch and shoot three pointers at a higher rate than he has his whole career, shooting over forty seven five or over forty seven percent off the catch and shoot is just insane stuff. Especially considering that's something that he hasn't used for nearly ten years now since his Oklahoma City days. This is the last time he was putting up numbers similar to what it is this year. So I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see these guys locked in. We're heading into that final stretch of the season. It's frustrating. It's disappointing. Both these guys deserve more off uh, more all star love than they're getting but it's the the Sixers versus the World Tour, and it's time for them to lock in.